Well, good evening everyone and welcome back to Piccadilly Sidings. As I said before, I'm going to continue with this layout for a little while, uh, giving the main layout just a little bit of a rest because my momentum's with this layout at the moment and it will come back with the other one, I promise, and I will get things done again. So don't despair, the engage will continue. Um, but I am starting to think now about scenery because uh, I've got to that stage really where things do need to start looking in context. Now, you might say to me, John, 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 you did a video on vaccines probably around about three weeks ago or a month ago. I know I did, but that was on Piccadilly. And what I want to try and do with this one is to try and see if it could be like a part two, um, because I am doing the vaccines again from scratch and I am going to paint them. I've had to bring it in here because this is the only place big enough to take the boards. So you'll notice that that section down there is going to be going back for the bridge section, just going down behind there, because obviously there will be some depth going down. And the idea is that the board will come across here like that. Now, instead of going across and then across like that, what I've actually thought about doing, which again is different from the plan, is have it fixed to the bottom of the board and then slice off a part so it actually comes round like that. Right, so what I've done here is I've literally just placed what you saw on the floor up onto the layout. It's literally just placed there and it's not cut into position at all. But how have I done this? Well, you can see from here, it's actually got a board behind and that's a piece of hardboard, which is actually in two pieces. And then I've covered it with two mil gray board. Okay. The reason for that is so I can bend it around the corner. The hardboard would probably struggle to go around such a tight curve. But what I want to do, the whole board is going to go down a bit and is going to be fixed. If you'll, I'll show you on the front, it's going to be fixed to the, uh, the battening going on the side with with screws and washers uh, when I finally get to that point um, but what I need to do as you can see I've marked on these lines and this is a cutout um, where um, so that bit will be fixed to the board down as I just explained and then this bit will come over the top there'll be an opening there for the trains to go through into the back into the fiddle yard and then this piece here will finish about there there we go so that's cut so you can see that i've decided to do more of an arch shape which will probably be the same shape as i do for the actual tunnel portal and there'll be i've cut it down there and it's still positioned as it was but that the whole thing will go down at that end because it's sort of tipping up a little bit so once that's fixed to the board so it'll drop about another two inches now what I'm going to do for this back scene is I'm going to paint more of a stormy sky on this one. Uh, I did a nice sunny sky on on Piccadilly because I wanted it. <laughs> Manchester is renowned for its rain and I thought I wanted to be a little bit optimistic. Um, probably does get sun very occasionally, but this one it's like I said, it's a made up layout and I just want to go a little bit more dramatic. So I'm going to paint, I'm going to start off with the blues and the whites like I did before, but I'm going to put a little bit of red in it, make it more purpley and then sort of make and then bring it down to a more of a yellowy hue on the horizon and then just paint in some basic hills to indicate a back scene because this is going to be a countryside type setting. Um, I was thinking of having some houses around here with a road and a car park. But actually, since the last clip, which I filmed yesterday, um, I did a lot of thinking about it overnight. And um, I'm going to change things a little bit. So it's more of a wayside stop, heritage type setting. Although the 158 will come in and go out again as a little service, but it's very much the country rural setting. All right, so I'll get painting with that. I will leave the camera on so you can see what I'm doing, but it'll be more sped up. I might even put a bit of music over the top of this one. All right, speak to you soon.
so you can see now I've gone ahead and put the sky in. Um, quite a stormy sky on this occasion. Um, so I, the way I did it, you obviously, um, if you've been watching all the way through, you will have seen that I started off by putting on the white and then putting on the blue, the big cobalt blue, which is that colour just there. The, it's not the dark ultramarine, it's cobalt, which is very important for a sky. And then adding red, um, which is cadmium red. And um, and then also, I believe it's a cadmium yellow at the bottom here as well. So And then it's the mixture of the reds and the yellows, which actually dull down the sky. And then putting in blacks as well. So you can see there's like little bits of black just behind the white clouds at the front, just to give an indication there are further clouds behind. So you can see that it's like a layering effect of all the different clouds there. Now, the next stage is to start putting on the ground. So I am going to start painting on some hills. And they are good because it's quite a stormy sky, it would imply that the it's more of a silhouette type affair in the background. Now, normally, when it's a bright sunny day, you normally see a very bluey grey pale colour um, as things get further away. But in a storm, the light creates uh, the hills become a shadow, so you get this. Um, silhouette effect so the hills will be quite dark on the top and actually get lighter towards the bottom <laughs> It's taken about a couple of hours, all told. You've clearly not seen that much. Um, and I've cut it down by quite a lot. But just to recap, um, I started off by putting white on the basics for the sky, blue at the top, and then a hint of brown mixing in to make a purple, adding a bit of black and then swooshing it down diagonally to give that feeling of distance. Now, Whilst a lot of this back, this lower part is going to be covered up, I had to create something. So I've created this silhouette of type hills, um, the little blobs on the top that you saw representing trees. Obviously, this is representing the river, um, which will go under the bridge to give the, imp the impression it goes on into the distance. And then we've got a little town over here. Again, just simple outlines and going along more trees along the top. Another little building just there and obviously the hole for the, the tunnel. Now, my next job is to get this all up washed up. And once it's dry, I'll put it back on the layout and you can see what it looks like. Right, so there it is. Just pan you across. Okay. Now, I must say, at this moment in time, because it's not finished, I'm not completely happy with it at the moment. And I may still change parts of it, because looking at it on here, it does seem that the bank or the grass is a little bit on the high side. So, again, it's all subject to change. Uh, this side might be all right, because I would like a bank here anyway, which could just sort of come in like that and then come down towards the river um, but I mean I do want this to be a hidden section so I'll have to have a think about how that's going to work but I might end up lowering that a little bit uh, which won't be a difficult job but it's the same for all of it really I've put it in but I might still change some of it because certain parts of it don't quite work or the colours are wrong 
and I'd need to alter that and adapt it and change it. But that's one of the base, the benefits of painting your own because you can, um, you can change things and you know what colours have made the colours on here. So it wouldn't be difficult to change it if I needed to. So the next stage then is to get the um, banks in. Um, or actually, I might put the platform in first, thinking about it. So I'll put the platform in. So I might do a video how to build a platform. And then it'll be the scenery after that, I think. Um, I might even go ahead to um, model the remnants of this platform. Not sure at the moment. Because what I was thinking is, um, there's going to be a tunnel portal over there. But I was actually thinking of putting a double tunnel portal in. Uh, I know this line's got a buffer on the end and it will remain so, um, despite some people saying I should have that going through to the traverser and then come back out again. I don't want to do that from the shunting puzzle point of view because it would make it too easy. But from a layout point of view, an actual tunnel there, whether it's an open tunnel or disused tunnel, um, could block it off or whatever to give the impression that a train would have come in here into the platform, which would have been here, and then go off out that way to another location. So that could work. So I'll have to have a think about that and um, take it one step at a time. But I do quite like the idea of a double, double, a double tunnel mouth portal. Um, so anyway, I think I'm gonna leave the video there and uh, I know it's been two videos on, on um, painting back scenes of recent times, but this one is very different. This one is quite a much, like I said before, more stormy type sky with quite aggressive looking clouds. And I've tried to make it a little bit more colourful. So it's probably a tad more painterly than an actual sky. But yeah, I, I, like, I like the actual sky bit. It's just, it's this bit at the bottom here. At the moment, I'm still... I'm still um, up in the air about depending on what the scenery looks like. Right. Anyway, take care of yourself and I'll catch you soon. Bye now.